Now that we have a general idea about KNNs, in this video we will talk about four things. First, we will talk about some other useful arguments in the context of KNNs. Second, we will very briefly talk about KNN regression. Third, we will talk about pros and cons of KNNs. And fourth, we will talk about some more terminology in machine learning, which is relevant in the context of KNNs. Now there is this other argument weights that you can pass to K neighbors classifier and I want to briefly mention that. So far when predicting labels, we were giving equal weights to all examples, all nearby examples. But we can change that using this weights parameter. We can tell it to weigh the examples higher if they are closer to the query point. An exercise for you is to play around with this argument, see the documentation of this argument in scikit-learn, and then check whether you get better validation score using this argument or not. We can also use k-nearest neighbors algorithm for regression problems. In case of classification, we take the majority vote of k-nearest neighbors. In case of regression problems, we take the average of the k-nearest neighbors. Similar to classification problems, in regression problems as well, we can weigh the closest examples more and we can have weighted regression. You can see an example of using k-nearest neighbors algorithm for regression problems in the lecture notes. Okay, so, so far we have two machine learning algorithms in our toolbox, decision trees and k-nearest neighbors. Both these algorithms are easy to understand and interpret. In case of KNNs, we have this simple hyperparameter k or n neighbors, which controls the fundamental trade-off. And given the simplicity of this model, we can learn quite complex functions if we are given enough data. If you compare this to decision trees, in decision trees, most of the work is done in fit. During fit, it finds out the features that are most informative. It also finds out the thresholds for these features. In case of KNNs, there is no work to do during fit. It doesn't do anything during fit. What it does is store all the examples. And that's why it's also called lazy learning because it takes no time to fit. But then when it's time to predict, it has to find the distance of the, this new query point to all other examples. And so if you look at the fit and score time of cross validate of KNN classifier, you will see that your score time is higher than your fit time. And so in general, one disadvantage of KNNs is that it is slow during prediction time. Usually prediction time is more important because many times we want real time predictions. Other disadvantage is that often it doesn't give you a great test accuracy compared to other modern approaches. We haven't seen any modern approaches yet, but we will see them in the coming weeks. So based on what we just said, there is this notion of parametric models and non-parametric models. And KNN is a classic example of non-parametric models. Now you will find many definitions of these terms, but a simple way to think about this is as follows. You ask this question, do you need to store at least order of n worth of stuff to make predictions? If yes, your model is non-parametric. For example, in case of KNNs, as I said before, we don't do anything in fit. What we do is we just store all the examples. And so we need to store at least order of n worth of stuff. In case of decision stump, on the other hand, when you learn your model, you have this one feature and its threshold. 
And that's what you need to store to make predictions. You don't need to store anything else from your data. And so decision term is a parametric model. If you want to know more about this terminology, I have included some reading material here and here, but try not to get too much stuck into this. I think for us, this definition of checking whether we need to store order of n worth of stuff or not is good enough. Last week, we talked about the most important problem in machine learning, which is overfitting. The second most important problem in machine learning is curse of dimensionality. This problem affects all learners, but it's, it's especially bad for nearest neighbor. Now remember that in decision trees, we pick the most informative feature at each step. And if there are irrelevant features, the algorithm just won't pick those features. But in case of KNNs, that doesn't happen. In case of KNNs, all features have equal importance. And all of them contribute when we calculate distances between examples. So if there are many irrelevant features, KNN is hopelessly confused. With enough irrelevant features, the similarity between examples is not meaningful anymore and KNN is no better than random guessing. And remember that in machine learning, most of the times we are dealing with high dimensional problems. Here I'm showing you an example. I'm creating classification data sets with features ranging from 4 to 2000 with this step of 100. So this function make classification creates X and Y for me with 2000 samples. Then I'm creating my train and test splits. I'm training dummy classifier and I'm training KNN classifier with that training and test split. I'm carrying out cross validation for both these classifiers. And here are my results. Now, what do I see here is when my number of features is four, my KNN validation accuracy is pretty high. So KNN is doing pretty well in this case. But as I increase my number of features, my KNN validation accuracy starts going down and down and down. And it kind of becomes similar to dummy classifier accuracy with 1,904 features. So that's the problem of course of dimensionality. In case of KNNs in particular, as we increase the number of irrelevant features, the accidental similarity between examples swamps out the meaningful similarity. 